We're standing above Lake Paris here in the background, and I'm here with Willie Pink, and where are we standing at? At Yahi Heki, the uh, State Parks Indian Regional Museum. And what does Yahi Heki mean? It means home of the wind. Home of the wind, huh? Yes. Feel a nice breeze coming on us right now here. Yes. What was different about this area, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 years ago, 100 years ago? <laughs> well, 100 years ago, Bernasconi Hot Springs was an active resort with uh, hot water flowing through its springs. How, how far away is that from here? It's right, well, you can see to the uh, western edge of the Bernasconi Mountain, it was right over there, was the Bernasconi Hot Springs resort area. And what? then beyond that, then, you know, 100, 20, 100, 50 years ago, you get into Mystic Lake, uh, which was a natural lake yeah, result from the flow of the San Jacinto River, which flowed into Mystic Lake and then eventually into Lake Elsinore. So how, how are you involved in this? Uh, I was involved uh, starting back in 1988 and assisting with Parks and Recreation and, and making certain types of replications of artifacts. There are several Indians represented here who are assisting in uh, the Department of Parks and Recreation and, and being able to display more items change the display somewhat to reflect more of what the people feel is representative of the culture. There are five tribes represented in this regional museum. It'd be the Chimawevi, the Cupeño, the Serrano, the Luceño, and the Cahuilla people. For a regional museum, why is it so important to collaborate with, with other tribes? Well, because it's representative of the region. Okay. So we want those people, as an example, uh, Cuyamaca State Park was the regional museum's site for the Degueño people. Uh, Chasse Indian Grinding Rock up in central Sierra Foothills was representative of the Miwok and the Maidu people up in that particular region. State Indian Museum represents a lot of the tribes to the north, northern California area. There are different artifacts in here which are representative of their particular cultures. All right. And we can go check them out, right? And we can go look at them and you'll learn something. <laughs> Let's do it. Willie, we're inside, and uh, there's a lot of eye candy going on right here. What am I looking at? <laughs> was a painting that was done to depict the Indians along the Colorado River. And so what the museum did is they took that picture and blew it up and made a wall hanging out of it to mm -hmm. kind of show what the people dressed like along that particular region, Mojave, Chimoyve Indians. But what we have in addition to this are murals that were done by Robert Freeman, who was a Luceno Indian from the Rincon Indian Reservation. Okay. And what he did through his own artistic talents was try and make representations of Indian people, their daily life, some of their encounters. So like all, on all these walls right here and everywhere I'm seeing, right? Yes. Here you have like what they call the Tatuila or whirling dance, eagle dance. Uh, being carried out, you have representation of the baskets and the various designs. This is a sand painting up in the one corner, which was representative of the creation. Now, what about all these animals that are on the wall back here? Well, these animals are part of the park's uh, display of, you know, again, animals from this particular region. Mm -hmm. And so part of it would be to help to interpret the culture as well, too, as to what things were significant and what they mean. The golden eagle. Eagle carries the prayers up of the people and is used in the eagle dance ceremony. Uh, Muta, the great horned owl, is the messenger of death. Uh, he's only doing his job. Okay. You know? Wow. But if the owl speaks your name, he's pretty much telling you your time's coming. When, when people come here to tour the museum, uh, are, are there docents to take them around and there's, share? There's going to be docents, and I think there's also going to be stations where you can push buttons and and hear language. Back onto this wall here is a photograph of the removal of the Capeno people from Warner Springs. Oh, My wow. grandfather was alive during this time, and so we were evicted from our homeland. We were the last tribe uh, to be forcibly removed from our homeland in the United States. Really? Yes. Wow. And so this, this is a picture of that removal with the Teamsters who came in. Uh, Lomas at the time wanted the cavalry to come in in order to continue peace in case the Indians wanted to uprise my grandfather and them. Mm -hmm. um, but instead they issued uh, weapons to the Teamsters at that time. So if there was any resistance, then, then they would at least be able to defend themselves. Behind us over here, bow making. It's representative of various different styles. This is uh, bows made from elderberry and it takes it through the process of harvesting the wood. Wow. So th this is what it starts off as? Yes, elderberry. 
So, so how long of a process would it take if you're gonna, from start to finish? To do it properly? Well, the best time to get the wood is after a fire. The okay. Wood, the wood becomes tempered. All and right. It's, it, that's your better bow is from that. And so shaping it would probably take you a good two days. Good two days, yes. Huh? California basketry. Uh, most of it represented of Southern California, but California Indians were renowned for their basket weaving. Uh, collections began as early as 1795, which some of the baskets are now housed in Spain and the Museo de los Americas. Wow. So, I mean, they were prized back in then and they're prized today. The My. designs mean several different things, but mostly they mean something to the weaver themselves. Okay. These are unbelievable. These, these are, are. This is representative of tribes from other from the northern region, mm -hmm. homo basket, which is, would be a cooking basket. How long would it take? Do you have any idea how long it would yeah, take? Yeah, there's some that, uh, this is a twining thing, probably about a week on a good twining basket. Something like this, made, and this is twined as well, would probably take at least a month. It varies from tribe to tribe. They use different materials. They use what was available to them in their regions. So you can make baskets uh, that would hold liquids? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. And that came with the swelling of it too. They would cook in the baskets as well. Like I said, this one over here was a cooking basket. Okay. So you would put your acorn meal in there wet and then drop hot rocks in it and it, it would cook that way. You could actually boil water in it. All uh, right, what are we doing right now? Right now, I'm trying to get it ready to split. This is Junkus, with another name for wire grass. Uh-huh. And then this is split in three ways. Okay, and what do we, what's the purpose of what we're this doing? This is used to create the laces for basket weaving. And when you learn it properly, then you're able to split with your eyes closed. You put it in your mouth? Too? Yes. Okay. If you could use your toes, you would. <laughs> you're not joking? No, I'm not joking. Okay, <laughs> okay. How many different pieces of these would you need for a basket? For a complete basket, probably about 200. 200 of these? Yeah. Wow, okay, now I can see why it takes uh, a, a couple weeks <laughs> or a month. You can actually lift these off and be able to explain to children, like the atlatl, um, which was pre bow period. Right here? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. And then the one piece atlatl dart, which goes into this. Okay. And this would fit into the end. Whoa. And then it would be rested between the fingers uh -huh. and, and thrown. Thrown? Oh my goodness. So you're just like, wow. Yeah, it's an overhand throw. And, you know, like, uh, there's various tribal groups that are still using at levels, or spear throwers, as some people call them. Uh, this is a little amphitheater, which is oh, used yeah. for um, being able to give presentations and tell more about the history of the people. Sure. It's available for uh, schools to bring in students and then the docents and as well as the park staff would be able to um, give examples, hands-on examples to students mm -hmm. and teach them more about the local culture, Indian culture here. Willie, what are the hours of the museum? The well, museum is open on Friday from 10 to 2 and Saturdays and Sundays to, from 10 to 4. All right, and once again, I'm gonna have you say the name of the museum. Yaiheki. Yaiheki. Home of the wind. Home of the wind. Yes. Well, that's good. Thank you so much, Willie. I appreciate it. Thank you. Great time. All right.